Welcome to Jeremy's IT Lab. This is a complete course for the CCNP NCORE, Enterprise Core exam. In this lab, we'll test out two optional STP features. First, root guard, which prevents a switch from accepting superior BPDUs on specific interfaces. This protects against a new switch becoming the root bridge. Second, loop guard, which prevents layer two loops from occurring when some types of software or hardware malfunctions occur. Let's look at the lab instructions. Step one says to verify the STP topology and enable STP event debugging on all switches. First, I'll go on switch one. The topology diagram already shows the state of each port, but let's confirm anyway. Show spanning tree. Okay, switch one is the root bridge, as it says right here. And note that this is VLAN 10. This LAN is only using VLAN 10. Okay, both of Switch 1's active ports are designated ports in the forwarding state because it's the root bridge. Now let's enable event debugging. Debug spanning tree events. Next up, Switch 2. First, check the state of its ports. Show spanning tree. Okay, G00, connected to the root bridge, is a root port. And G01, pointing away from the root bridge, is a designated port. Let's enable that debug. Debug spanning tree events. Then switch three. First, check its STP status. Show spanning tree. G00, connected to switch one, is the root port. G01 is non-designated or alternate. Even though switch three has the same root cost as switch two, switch three has a lower bridge ID, so its port is blocking. And G02, connected to the customer switch, is designated. Now let's enable that debug. Debug spanning tree events. Finally, I'll go on to the customer switch. So this represents a customer network that is connected to our network. Let's check spanning tree. Show spanning tree. Only G00 is up. I shut down the others. But in reality, it would be connected to the rest of the customer network. Now let's enable the debug. Debug spanning tree events. Next, let's return to the lab instructions for step two. It says to lower the customer switch's priority to make it the root bridge. Okay, I'll do that now. Go back to the CLI of the customer switch, conf t, the current root bridge, switch one, has a priority of 4106, as shown here. That's 4096 plus 10 for the VLAN ID. I'll make this switch's priority zero with spanning tree VLAN 10 Priority zero. Now let's confirm that it's the new root bridge. Do show spanning tree. Okay, it says this bridge is the root. Just to be sure, I'll look on switch one as well. Okay, on switch one, there are some debug messages. It says heard root, and this is the customer switch's bridge ID. Notice the priority of 10. That's zero plus the VLAN ID. And it supersedes this, which is switch one's bridge ID. So the new root is the customer switch. I'll double check. Show spanning tree. Okay, it no longer says this bridge is the root here. Now let's return to the lab instructions for step three. It says to enable root guard where appropriate, verify that it works, and then fix the problem and see what happens after. So where should we enable root guard here? Well, currently a customer switch has taken the root bridge role changing the STP topology of our LAN. Instead of allowing that to happen, we should have enabled root guard on switch 3G02, the port connecting to the customer network. Better late than never, so I'll go do that now on switch 3. Conf T, interface G02. Let's enable it with spanning tree guard root. And after enabling it, we get a debug message indicating that root guard blocked G02. Let's confirm with do show spanning tree. First of all, notice that the root bridge is switch one again with priority 4106. And then look at G02 status, broken. And we can see the explanation here, root inc, which means root inconsistent. If I use do show interfaces status, notice that G02 status is connected. It's not error disabled. Being disabled by root guard is different than being error disabled, 
because once you solve the problem, the port should come right back up. To solve the problem, let's go back on the customer switch. I'll hit the up arrow a couple of times, and then let's add no in front of the priority zero command. Let's confirm that it changed. Do show spanning tree. Okay, this switch's priority is back to the default. Now I'll go on to switch three again. Before switch 3 re-enables G02 again, we have to wait for the max age timer on G02 to count down. The information from the customer switch's superior BPDUs is remembered on this port for 20 seconds, the max age timer. But once it counts down, RootGuard automatically unblocks the port. Let's confirm one last time. Do show spanning tree. Okay, G02 is designated once again. Let's return to the lab instructions for step 4. It says to use BPDU filter to cause a layer 2 loop in the LAN. So the purpose of this is to simulate a software failure, preventing a switch from sending STP BPDUs out of a particular port. For example, switch 3G00 is a root port because it receives BPDUs from switch 1G01. If switch 1G01 stops sending those BPDUs, Switch 3 thinks it has lost its path to the root bridge. It will then make G01 its new root port, and G00 a designated port in the forwarding state. The problem with that is, even though Switch 1 G01 doesn't send BPDUs, the port is still up and able to forward frames, resulting in a layer 2 loop. Let's simulate that by going onto the CLI of Switch 1 and enabling BPDU filter on G01 conf t, interface G01, spanning tree BPDU filter enable. So as soon as I enter that command, switch 1 G01 stops sending BPDUs. Switch 3 G00 still saves the information of the last BPDU that switch 1 sent. But after the max age timer expires, switch 3 will make G01 its new root port, and then make G00 designated in the forwarding state. Let's confirm now by going on to switch 3 and using do show spanning tree. So, G01 has indeed become the new root port, although it's not in the forwarding state yet. That's fine, it will be soon. Once it's forwarding, we officially have a layer 2 loop. To confirm the loop, let's do a packet capture. I'll click the plus sign here to add a new pane, and then right click the link between switch 2 and switch 3, click on packet capture, and let's add the packet capture to the right pane. I'll click on settings, and let's increase the maximum number of packets to 5000, and then hit apply. And in the bottom, increase the number of packets per page to 250. So, currently there is no traffic. We only see STP BPDUs. But I configured an IP address on each of these switches VLAN 10 SVIs. So I'll go on the customer switch. Type end to go to privileged exec mode, and then to make it send a broadcast ARP request, I'll type ping 10.0.0.1. Before hitting enter, I'll click clear on the packet capture. And now, let's send those ARP requests. As soon as I hit enter, the first page fills up with ARP requests. These are from the customer switch, looping round and round switch 1, switch 2, and switch 3. And within a few seconds, the 5000 packet limit on the packet capture is exceeded. Ok, I'll go back on switch 1 and disable BPDU filter with no spanning tree BPDU filter enable. Ok, now let's start the packet capture again. No more looping ARP requests. Now let's return to the lab instructions for step 5. It says to enable loop guard where appropriate and then verify that it works by enabling BPDU filter again, and finally disable BPDU filter again to see what happens. So, where should loop guard be enabled? In this case, switch 3 is the one that stops receiving BPDUs. We want to disable switch 3 G00 when it stops receiving BPDUs from switch 1, to prevent a layer 2 loop. I'll go on switch 3. You can enable loop guard per port, or by default on all ports. I'll do the latter. Use exit to return to global config mode. 
and then spanning tree loop guard default. Let's check that loop guard is enabled with do show spanning tree interface G00 detail. Near the bottom, it says loop guard is enabled by default on the port. Okay, now let's go back to switch one and enable BPDU filter on G01 again to stop the BPDUs. Spanning tree BPDU filter enable. And then go on switch three to confirm. You can use do show spanning tree interface G00 detail to confirm the current state of the timer. It says here, message age. This counts up to 20. If it reaches 20, the BPDU is aged out and switch three reacts. Once the last BPDU from switch one G01 ages out, switch three blocks G00 thanks to loop guard. Let's check the state of STP. Do show spanning tree. So G00 status is broken and it says loop inconsistent here. It did make G01 its root port because it's still getting switch one's BPDUs via switch two, but G00 is disabled, preventing a loop from occurring. Finally, to confirm what happens when switch three G00 receives BPDUs again, I'll go back on switch one and disable BPDU filter. No spanning tree, BPDU filter enable. And then I'll return to switch three. As soon as switch three receives a BPDU from switch one, we get a log message indicating that loop guard unblocked G00. Let's confirm one last time. Do show spanning tree. Okay, G00 is switch three's root port once again, and G01 is blocking. So loop guard prevented a loop when switch three stopped receiving BPDUs on G00, and then allowed G00 to automatically recover when the problem was fixed. In this lab, we took a look at root guard and loop guard, two optional STP features. That's all for this lab. I hope it was helpful. Thanks for watching. Before finishing this video, let me thank my JCNP level channel members. To become a member, please click the join button under the video. Thanks to Jonathan Makara, Velva Jacob, George, Nasir Chowdhury, Gustavo Macedo, Marcel Lord, Pavel M, Dragos Hernea, Zakib Shah, Mayor Salman, Vitaus194, Chance Carter56, Mark Jackson, Bold1C1U, Michael Carroll, Gerald Guiam, Fristas1207, Gabriel Braga, Hector Hernandez, Roji Kuriakos, Arpad Konives, Five Feet, Owad, Daniel Brown, Jose Alvarez, Hussein Yavuz, Kevin Hayes, Samuel Tavares, Roger Bratseth, Mustafa Ersoy, Nasser Zahar, Brian Grant, Georgi Gemijev, Hypocrisy Allergic, Arlen Plagaria, Dear Diso, Adelson Pereira, Farad69, Joyce Njoroge, Lucien Stoichitoyu, Madmark50484, Alexandru Stratan, Hiago Bicalho, DMJ2, Kurt Nell, Omid Farakesh, Steve Cox, Jasper Yim, Wilmer Romero, Pedro Hartman, Ivano Capuano, Enigma G, Jefferson Steelflex, Burl Campbell, Abhishek Sahu, Toxic, Sinan Sarisinar, Gio, Daniel Andrade, Mike Crumby, Eliel Eliluli, Dragos George, Philip Jovanovic, Random User 7547, Wagner Botelho, ICT EDU Official, Mateusz Wzaszynski, Eren Gryacze, Dean I, Ruben Hernandez, Surge22, and Girish. Sorry if I pronounced your name incorrectly, but thank you so much for your support. Thanks to you and my other supporters, I am able to make these videos and release them for free on YouTube, so I really appreciate the support. Another great way to support the channel is to like the video, leave a comment, subscribe, and most importantly, share this video with others. So if this video was helpful, I'd appreciate it if you did any of those. Thanks for watching. Thank you.